Hello and welcome. This is lecture number six. It's going to be about acceleration. Go ahead, put the date at the top of your notes and let's get started. So here is our most basic formula for acceleration. Go ahead, write this down. So acceleration is equal to big fraction, the change in velocity over time. That is just our most basic formula for acceleration. So if the velocity is changing, you must be accelerating. Notice here we don't say speed, we say velocity because just changing direction is a change in velocity because velocity has both speed and direction. So just changing direction counts as acceleration. So if I go from heading you know, straight north, then a little while later, I'm heading straight east. So that even if I'm traveling the same speed north as I'm traveling east, that still counts as accelerating. The most basic type of acceleration, the one we're gonna deal with the most is acceleration that happens in a straight line. This would be like a car that is going, we'll say it's going five miles per hour but the, the driver steps on the accelerator. It's called the accelerator because it provides acceleration. And then after the accelerator exerts a force on the car, all of a sudden now we're going 20 miles per hour. So this is an example of changing direction. This is an example of changing speed. Both are types of acceleration. All right, so slowing down and turning are still types of acceleration. That's a good note that we can you can just write that right into your notes. So which direction is the acceleration going? So if this if we draw a car again and this car is braking, all right, we might be going you know 20 miles per hour this way but we can have acceleration in this direction if braking. So this is the direction of acceleration when braking. And so the brakes could be exerting a force on the car that could perhaps be, you know, five miles per hour per second uh, in uh, the opposite direction of the speed, and that's going to bring this car to a stop. So, uh, you know, from this point for, uh, forward, we're going to really stop ever saying decelerating uh, and just call everything acceleration. It could just be in the opposite direction of our speed. Uh, and that uh, is going to slow our object down. Uh, now, turning is also a type of direct uh, acceleration because we said, uh, and you know, acceleration is change in velocity, and velocity is speed and direction. So the example I want to look at real quick is uh, an object orbiting another object. So let's say we've got you know the Earth and the Moon, and the Moon is orbiting the Earth. So the moon orbits at a constant speed, uh, but it is accelerating. And uh, because it is turning the entire time, and whenever you're orbiting like this, the acceleration always points towards the center. Right? And that's what's causing it to turn, is that it's accelerating um perpendicular to the direction it's moving that acceleration 
uh, just slowly causes it to turn in orbit. So let's write when orbiting, the acceleration points to the middle always. All right, so now the units for acceleration are pretty strange. You already saw it once on that other slide, but let's go over it formally. So if I've got an object that's going um, five kilometers per hour at uh, time zero seconds, and then after one second, it's going 10 kilometers per hour at the time of one second. So we basically pick an arbitrary moment to be time zero, and we start counting it from there. Uh, but we said acceleration uh, is equal to change in velocity over time. So that delta that I'm using there just means change. So our change in velocity, I went from five to 10. So a quick way to find change is to always do uh, the, the second number minus the first number. So 10 minus five, and these both have the unit of kilometers per hour. And then the time it took was just one second. All right, and so then this equals five kilometers per hour per second. And then just using what we know about fractions, we can re rearrange this and bring that second into the bottom of just a single fraction and rewrite this as five kilometers per hour per second. And so what we're doing here is it's basically a copy dot flop with kilometers over hours divided by seconds over one. You copy dot flop and the second comes right here. And then how do we say this? We're going to say kilometers per hour per second. Notice that we say per twice. And it, it's a little strange because you have two time units within one unit. One comes from our speed formula, distance over time, and the other comes from our acceleration formula, which is change in velocity over time. And those had two different time units. But two time units, that's just how you know it's acceleration. Acceleration always has two time units. So accel, oh, I'm spelling acceleration wrong. Undo, undo. Acceleration gets two time units. All right. So let's come up with another uh, unit for acceleration. Our most common unit for acceleration is going to be meters per second per second or meters meters per second squared. So this is going to be most common. So what does four meters per second squared mean? So 
So this means that uh, regardless our starting speed, we will gain four meters per second every second. So an example of this could best be shown with a table. So I'll create a table I'm going to show what the speed of an object is over time. So time versus speed. At time uh, zero seconds, we're going 20 meters per second. After one second, we would then be going 24 meters per second. After two seconds, we'd be going 28 meters per second, and so on. Three seconds, we'd be going 32 meters per second. Let me like, make that four look more like a four. All right, so question for you. Suppose a car is moving in a straight line, steadily increasing its speed each second, first from 35 to 40 kilometers per hour, then from 40 to 45 kilometers per hour, then from 45 to 50 kilometers per hour. What is its acceleration? So again, remember, acceleration is the change in velocity over time. And we only need to use one of these because, as you might have noticed, the change is the same each time. So the change in velocity here is five kilometers per hour. And that's happening every one second. All right, rearrange that unit there and we would get a acceleration of five kilometers per hour per second. So five kilometers per hour Per second. Sometimes you say five kilometers per hour second, but uh, I think it sounds better when you say per before everything that might be in the denominator. All right, so if this keeps going, you know, it's going to eventually get going insanely fast. Uh, so acceleration uh, is rarely constant forever. Eventually, you have to let off the accelerator or air resistance starts balancing off the uh, balancing out the acceleration. Okay, so I'll embed a few more questions for you to try here, but that's that for this. Hopefully you took good notes. Have a good rest of your day.